Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I have purchased the Reno Air Race Pack, the full one, the $60 one, and I have done so with my eyes open. I've watched videos, other people's videos on this. I rarely do this. I've watched other people's reviews on it. So I understand the drawbacks, in particular in race mode, but I'm going to test them out in free flight. And that is because I'm going to, and this is something I didn't see in any video, go through each one. Uh, to show you the differences. And so we are going to, in this video, focus on the P-51, which is probably the most interesting one. Uh, and I'm just going to go through all variants of the P-51 that come with the $60 pack, so you can see uh, what the differences are between them. And that is going to be hopefully interesting. <laughs> says, uh, at least I didn't see a video like that as of uh, me recording this. So, yep. I wanted to see that. I wanted to see what all the differences were so that I could make an informed decision about maybe picking one or two instead of getting the $60 pack. But they, they all sort of look good. You'll note that the variants do look different. Uh, some even have a three-blade propeller. The cockpit's different. The airframe, the cockpit internals are different. And But the question is, you know, is the flight model very different? Probably not. Uh, maybe. Incidentally, one of the criticisms in the racing mode is that even though the flight model is different in free flight, it is not in racing mode. It's normalized in racing mode so that there isn't any pay to play sort of aspect to this, which is sad, right? I mean, uh, we would like some variation in the different planes so that it's not just running around in circles kind of thing. But also the, the maintenance aspect of it and by which I mean the overheating and the uh, mechanical failures those happen in free flight but I don't think they happen in racing mode I haven't tried racing mode yet because I watched the videos and they said well it, it's th th there's mis mixed messages about racing mode let me put it that way I'll, I'll eventually do that but my goal here is to actually see the full differences between these planes in free flight there is only one livery per each one of those, and I'm gonna just go with the default 50% fuel. And it, of course, the P51 is really hard to take off in, so I'm probably not gonna look great initially until I get more practice. Uh, for each flight, I'm going to go with a different location, and uh, I, I'm curious about how Mexico City looks right now, so I'm actually going to start off at Mexico City. Okay, so Goldfinger looks like this inside, and uh, I'll wait a little bit so that the scenery sort of gets adjusted. But uh, it's got this nice sort of bronzish panel on front. Fairly standard instruments. And uh, off to the side, these, uh, you know, the throttle quadrants, the propeller pitch stuff, and the aileron rudder uh, tend to be the same between them. We've got a wood floorboard. I've flown two variants uh, already just to make sure that they work, right? Uh, and yeah, so that's the interior. And it's very nicely done. Very crisp. Not much weathering, but then again, you know, these planes probably get high maintenance. You know, they don't uh, stick around without getting cleaned up. Uh, very shiny Goldfinger in particular, you might expect that already. Yeah, very smooth. I mean, you're not gonna have too much protruding rivets or anything like that. You, you can see some of the detailing, but it's not gonna be severe uh, because these are racers and they will want to be smooth. All right, so taking off, releasing the brakes, and managing the propeller control is important here. We need to manage RPM and everything, but, and here we go with the yaw tendencies. Uh, if I hit the uh, rudder trim right, I could probably manage that better. But, okay, staying on the runway is a good plus. And we're off. We can't run it at that kind of manifold pressure for very long. I can't really see the red line on the manifold pressure gauge right now. But I'll take it to about 2,700 RPM. Uh, well, for this one, the manifold pressure red line is all the way at 61. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> that's, uh, well, let's try 50 and see if it conks out at some point. Um, but, yeah. For the other two that I flew, they did have different manifold pressure characteristics. It seems like it's RPM uh, redline. Well, the green range is at 
2700, so we'll stick to that. Okay, let's see the outside. It's very stiff. I don't know if that's a racing thing, because I haven't flown racing variants of the P-51 in Sims. I haven't flown the P-51 in real life, uh, but in Sims I have flown the P-51, you know, Warbird style. It's certainly not this stiff. This is very fly-by-wire stiff kind of thing. But I can imagine that for racing they might want it like this. We'll try and get some altitude and go inverted and see what happens. I'll also push it to the limit and see if it kills it, right? My goal is to break the plane. So I'm pulling some Nega G's inverted and it doesn't seem like the engine's having any problem. Heck, I'm pulling a lot of... here, full negative G's. Flip around. Oh, it didn't like that particularly. But it didn't actually... it hasn't actually killed it. So, okay. Uh, it's still not liking it. Uh, okay. We have officially hurt the plane too much. It's stalled out. Okay. I want to see if that one gets busted, so I'll restart. So I'm going to just push it full throttle and see what happens. I feel like uh, it's certainly easy to race with this, but is it too easy, maybe? Hmm. Okay, I'm satisfied. I don't think, uh, barring stalling it, that this is going to die anytime soon, even at full throttle. And the highest RPM I can set it at. Yep. Okay, let's go on to the next variant, keeping this in mind. Okay, we are at JFK, and we are going to fly around New York, which is a photogrammetry area, and so we'll see what the lag does. You can see the cockpit is very different. This is the Voodoo, so F-51D Voodoo, and it's sort of got a more modern racing setup as opposed to a vintage look. Still wooden floorboards, but uh, very gray interior. And externally, we have a very racy sort of canopy engine by Jose Flores. Okay, well, we'll see how it does. It's a very shiny propeller cone. That's a lot of pitch trim. Note that it's at 0.4 right now for takeoff. So that's worth paying attention to. It's sort of a gloomy day here. Let's see how it goes. Oh, it, uh, all that pitch trim makes it go off the ground pretty quickly. So trying to take a look at the manifold pressure there. It's upside down. <laughs> the numbers are upside down. Why? Okay, well, let's get the RPM down to 2,700 just for safety's sake. Well, we can see the New York skyline there. Oh, there's a red light there. But maybe... Let's... Pull it down a bit. I don't know whether it wants me to go... Stronger, or... Well, it seems to have enough power, so I'll just pull it back. Well, this has a lot more room on the manifold pressure to work with. So, my expectation would be it is more likely to have overheating issues. We'll see. There's no red line on the manifold pressure gauge. I'm at 40 right now. And it can certainly fly just fine at this. We're climbing. My throttle is at about 35%. <laughs> the propeller control is at about 55 to 60. So it's much lower than with the previous plane. Okay, we'll do another pass of downtown. We've got another red light there. The coolant temperature is really high. Um, I'm going to pull it down to a manifold pressure of 30 and see if we can get cooled off here. There's a spray bar. There's a coolant armed 
auto spray bar. The spray bar, coolant spray bar pressure is zero. The sound is fairly soft. I don't change it per plane, the volume. They don't appear to be very special sounds. Nothing that's striking to me. Okay, uh, performance still seems fine around here. They're bouncing a bit. Okay, well I'm gonna try and break it. We know that it can go to pretty high manifold pressure, so I'm just gonna force it. And so we're at 135 on the manifold pressure gauge and 3400 RPM. And we'll see what happens. The sound of the engine is sort of dying out. It's just sort of fading though. But we are losing power. I haven't changed the throttle yet. You can hear that we're losing power now. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to happen. But it seems reasonable. I'm gonna try to land at LaGuardia, but it's probably a bad idea. Well, the coolant temp red light is off. <laughs> I'm gonna send it back to low throttle and see if it recovers or not, or anything. I doubt it. I think it's just pretty much dead. No, we stalled. Ah, uh... Okay, so yes. Overheating the engines happens on that plane, which is interesting because we didn't really spend much time at high throttle on that plane and it already died. Uh, but on the previous plane, it was able to take full throttle for, well, I don't know how long it would have gone, but it certainly went longer than that. So we do have some differences. So that is the Voodoo versus the Goldfinger. But I wonder if there's just like two models. There's like the modern model with the modernish cockpit, and then there's the the sort of vintage flight model with the older cockpit. So let's see. That was the Voodoo. Next, the Wee Willy 2. Here, let's go uh, somewhere completely different. Let's go for Madrid. I haven't been to Madrid, I think. I don't remember being around Madrid in the game. Okay, well this is a very different cockpit from the other two. Uh, we can see greenish, olive green panels uh, that I'm familiar with and sort of a rosewood floorboard kind of deal. And... Yeah, uh, different dials up front. This is the Wee Willy 2. On the outside, uh, we've got sort of World War II-ish livery. Might have been... Uh, actual World War II plane restored or something because it's got four kills on it. Very shiny. Again, no wear and tear. It's uh, pristine condition. And let's see how it flies. We note that the RPM does seem to have a red line at 3000 and the manifold pressure at 60. So. Oh, oh, its tendency to the left is very strong. Much stronger than the others. Uh, I'm going in circles. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, just go. Go, full throttle. When in doubt, go full throttle and hope you clear the trees. Yeah, that, that uh, takeoff was very different, it seemed. It might have a, an incorrect rudder trim initially or something. I don't know. Um, you know the pitch trim by default is set to point two, so it's likely that these have different trims set up initially as well. And whether they are correct or not, I don't know. I do note that we have a coolant temp gauge there. Let's zoom in on that. No guarantee we have lights, but it's in the at the top end of the green zone. We still have a lot of pitch. <laughs> Uh, you're supposed to be a low-level racer. Stop going up. <laughs> None of these planes I expect have a heavy fuel load or a heavy load at all, so 
they will tend to get a lot of lift. So that's not unreasonable. So certainly the way you treat the engine is different per variant. So that's good. Again, I haven't tested racing mode, but my understanding is that it's not as delicate in racing mode as it is in free flight. So you may have a preferred plane in free flight. I have no idea where Madrid is. Okay, I need the map. But keep in mind, I've been at full thrall this entire time. Oh, there's, I think I see some towers over to the left there. But we're sustaining fairly good speeds. Well, it's not that fast. 310 knots. But at altitude, that would be much better. I certainly prefer this livery over the previous one. With the voodoo, yeah, not a big fan of that livery. Though I feel like maybe some weathering on the on this one in particular would be nice. But I do understand it is a racer, so the shininess is somewhat there. But like from the engine exhaust, you know, there should be something coming out there, right? Should be some singeing, surely. Okay, yeah, uh, it looks like photogrammetry to me. Let me see. Yeah. Not a whole lot of it compared to some other cities, but still. So, pretty good performance here with these. This one in particular feels like it might be a neat plane to fly around in. I have... Uh, it feels... it sounds like it's having a little bit more trouble. Uh, oh yes! Okay, so there we go. Um, pushing it full throttle the entire time there. Um, now, now it's dying now. So it took a lot longer to die than the previous one, but it did eventually uh, exhaust itself. I have uh, test landed it. They're not a problem to land. I think, uh, actually, weirdly, takeoff is much harder, uh, but, so I'm not gonna go through landing them. I don't think that's a major struggle. Well, I decide that we should fly at Istanbul, but it is rainy as all heck here. Which makes me wonder how to turn the lights on. Cockpit lights. Ah, good. Okay, cockpit, light, cockpit, cockpit lights work here. Well, we'll see how it does in the rain. So, this is Mrs. Virginia, and it is a P-51A, so an older variant, and you can tell by the cockpit, this is what the A variant cockpits look like. Less of a bu bubble canopy. And so yeah, we expect very different sort of performance and handling from a P-51A versus a P-51D. We'll see how it goes. Um, the cockpit is uh, what I would expect from a P-51A. This is very old style. Uh, same aileron rudder trim there. Qual throttle quadrant is a bit different. We are at Istanbul, but I don't think we're going to see too much of it. This is much easier to keep on the runway than the previous one. In fact, than any of the others. I think uh, it's just not as powerful. Seems like it's redline uh, manifold pressure is at 30, 38 there. I'll keep it to 38. I mean, there's multiple red lines, of course. It depends on how long you're going to keep it at the particular level. And there's probably documentation on that. There's another one of the nicer vintage liveries. I would expect that this is not by default very powerful because it's an older model, but they could switch the engine, so it's tough to say. You know, if they swap the P-51A's engine for a better engine. So far I'm fairly pleased by the variations and there is more variation than uh, I was expecting. Coming in, like I said, I was treating it as one plane, 
it is clear that they have different flight models. They can, you can bust the engines in this mode. Oh, let's see if I can pull up from there. Okay. Okay, well, I'm gonna push it to full throttle and see how it goes. It, it can't really go past the 38 level on the manful pressure too much, even though it's got red lines beyond that. So there's full throttle and uh, full RPM. We'll try and go up a bit. That might be interesting since it does seem to have a mixture lever, though my, it seems, seems like my mixture is not working with that. Hmm. Oh! It just, it's just off and on? Uh, the mixture seemed to be like off and on, as opposed to like, hmm. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? Uh, whoa! Okay, well, that's the end of that test. Hmm. Yeah, I thought you could just pull the mixture lever and it would, you know, obviously fine-tune the mixture. Uh, it seems like an off and on lever. I was not expecting that. Also, my own, I have a mixture uh, which got uh, axis on my throttle quadrant. And it doesn't seem to actually do anything with the mixture in the plane. So, I don't know if the mixture is working right. Well, I guess we are out of fuel since we crashed. Okay, next up, the P-51D Bunny. Okay, so the bunny, and I need to find the light again. The light is not exactly in the same place, which, you know, good. Cockpit lights, it's cabin lighting. Well, it's better. So, difference. We can barely see the interior. But the bunny is... Another one of these vintage look planes, but this one's shiny. Very shiny. And we are at Helsinki, because I think there was new photogrammetry here. But I'm gonna clear up some of the weather, because otherwise we won't be able to see anything. Sorry about uh, Istanbul being the way it was. Let's have it like that. Okay. So, then we can see the panel a little bit better. You can see uh, it is different. Uh, the airspeed indicator is very different. Okay. Well, here goes nothing. Much more like the previous one than the earlier ones, unless I'm getting better at this. I guess that's also a possibility. The gauges are very different. So I'm trying to figure out where is even... That doesn't seem right, does it? That manifold pressure gauge is... The gauges are messed up on this one. The mapping must be wrong. Because you can see the needle there. It doesn't correspond to anything. I don't even know what my manifold pressure is. Basically. So that's just messed up. The bunnies messed up. I'm sure... Well, they've got a whole mountain of things that they need to fix, don't they? I'm probably not going to review this anymore because I can't really gauge what the safe levels of the plane are. We'll just quickly take a look at Helsinki. So Helsinki in its uh, new state with this update. What's that thing right there? There's a floating... Helsinki has a floating thingamajig right there. That's fancy. <laughs> I think there's some photogrammetry, photogrammetry that went wrong right there. I mean, this is the first time I'm flying at Helsinki with the photogrammetry, so maybe it just needs to cache a whole bunch of stuff. Right now, it obviously seems to be in bad shape. After it's you know, put some into the rolling cache or whatever, it'll probably be better. But yeah, they need to fix the cockpit of this bunny, it seems. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, now we are in the Lady B, and we are flying out of Cairo, Cairo International. Uh, you can see the Lady B has a very white cockpit, creamish, well, sort of off-white. 
and uh, we have these instruments. Thankfully, the manifold pressure gauge and the RPM are normal looking, so that's positive. Uh, that's what the side panel looks like, and the front panel there. So uh, fairly, fairly good, nice and crisp. A little bit more modern. Uh, outside, we have D-Day stripes. Uh, otherwise, uh, we also have racing uh, checkerboard sort of thing. Uh, so a variety of of uh, motifs here. But that is Lady B, sort of a light blue look to it, except for the metal parts. All right, let's see how it takes off. Oh, very easy. Oh, no, it has a rightward tendency instead of a leftward tendency. Interesting. But yeah, generally easy, I think. Yeah. Getting it to 2700 RPM again. Probably we can go to 35 on a math flow pressure as we climb for now. I'll see what the maximum is for this. If we want to head towards pyramids, we should go west. So my thrall is pretty far down with the manifold pressure at 35. It's got a red line at 60. You can see there a little bit better. And then the RPM at 30. But let's see if I push the manifold pressure to 60, which is still... Well, that's already full throttle for me. I can't even get to 60. So, uh, yeah, changing the RPM doesn't... Yeah, we can't get to those red lines anyway. <laughs> so, I don't know what the red lines are for, but... Uh, it's alright. Quick flyby of a pyramid. Or two. They are pretty good looking. Oh, three, sorry. Right, there are three here. There are actually other pyramids around. Are those more pyramids over there? Engine-wise, uh, it's readily apparent that the models are different. As far as flying them is concerned, their flight characteristics don't seem that different. I think it was the Pharaoh Sneferu who uh, was sort of a pyramid experimenter who didn't quite get it right, so you can see some of the not quite right pyramids. This one is okay. It's just not one of the great pyramids. Ah, this is a more step pyramid like one. I think this is therefore one of the earlier ones. Okay, well I mean I feel like, like the first one I tested, this one seems to be able to keep full throttle for days. So, yeah. Very different sort of deal. You can sort of judge the amount of time I've been spending on it by taking a look at the fuel gauge, right? So, I do know I'm going to be editing out some of the quieter portions, so, but that's uh, one way to compare. All right, on to the next one. So this was the Lady B. Okay, this is Man of War, and we are flying out of Dubai. It's got sort of uh, JPEG artifacting right there. On this side, it's not too bad. Uh, I guess it's still it's just the lighting makes it like that, but still, that's distracting. Uh, like the shiny bit, but still. Uh, front panel, it uh, looks very nice actually. The front panel at least looks nice. Okay, outside. That, it's sort of got a tiger stripe thing going or something. Zebra maybe? I don't know. Man of War. Seems to have lots of kills. So I haven't flown much at Dubai. I want to take a look at it again. There's some additional Dubai scenery, but I'm going like, wasn't Dubai one of the places where they already had a lot of stuff? Okay, a little bit more leftward. Last one had a lot of rightward tendency for some reason. This one does not. 
This one has more level. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's just all me and I'm overcompensating one time and undercompensating another. Well, we see the green zone here is at 2,700 RPM. RPM wise, they're pretty pretty much the same, I think. I think the green zone for all of them should be around 2,500 to 2,700. It's a manifold pressure that seems to have differences. Here, this one is similar to the last one, but it can go above 60. The last one, you remember, couldn't go uh, above 60 on the manifold pressure. I guess Dubai does not have photogrammetry. I mean, obviously it has the main sights. Trimming this seemed, again, much easier, but then again, we're still slow. Once we get faster, we have to retrim quite a lot. Okay, so we've had the engine fairly conservative here at 30 on the manifold pressure. Now going to... Let's just go max it out and see. Still has the red line at 61 there, so maybe it can sustain it for quite a while. I mean, maybe people already know all these things about all these P51s. I don't know. I do not follow Reno Air Racing or anything like that, so... Maybe enthusiasts are more familiar with all these planes than I am. All of these seem very well controlled and easy to deal with as far as racing is concerned, though. Uh, yeah, from certain angles on the exterior, the engine sound seems to diminish to very low levels. So that was Man of War. Uh, these are getting a little bit more similar-ish, I feel. We'll quickly take a look at the Miss America. Uh, this one over here is the one that you get from the $20 pack. It's just a uh, stockish uh, P-51. It doesn't have a special sort of identity to it. So, but anyway, we'll take a look at that as well. But let's just quickly take a look at uh, Miss America. I guess we should be in America for that. Just for the heck of it. Um, let's say Houston. Well, this is a very different cockpit. This is one of the more modern ones. And you can see the manifold pressure redlining at 130. So that's pretty extreme. Miss America, well... Yeah, <laughs> as far as delivery is concerned, it, uh, it's not lying. I feel like the pilot's really small in there, but okay. Anyway, bubble canopy, very typical sort of P-51D style. And let's see how this works. I was thinking about not even taking off with it, but since it's one of the more modern-ish ones with the high manifold pressure, I wanted to see. Uh, this one has a rightward tendency. And pretty quick to get off the ground. It seems to indicate that anything above 61 is yellow zone, so we'll keep it below that as I trim out and get into normal flight. And of course, I get the RPM down as well. There's actually a little bit more wear and tear inside on the panels inside this cockpit, just a little bit. Of where on top of that and on that rim. Okay, so keeping it to 60 here, which is still, you know, at the top end of some of the other ones, as far as the map fold pressure is concerned. I guess we can try and hit the red line on the RPM. The first red line, that 30-ish. Uh, that's still not maxing out the RPM for me. Okay, let's max it out. So this is... Uh, well, let's go to 130. We can apparently go to 140 on the manifold pressure. We're going to 130. I can't actually see the RPM gauge anymore. Why am I sitting somewhat differently? Oh, because of the throttle there. Um, that's on the second red line on the RPM. We have the coolant temperature up there. It's still green, 112. But it sounds like it's dying. I pull it down back into 
safer territory. But we're still losing power here. So yeah, pushing it that high for very long does not allow it to last very long. Uh, this is a Texas highway. It should be wide enough, right? Oh, there's an overpass thing, though. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm going to hit that overpass. No. Over the overpass. Okay. Not oncoming traffic. No. I think we still have some power, though. I'm really tall. Oh, the highway's turning again. And there's another overpass. Ah, oh, shit. Oh. Oh, I hit a tree. Okay, now we are at Heathrow with the... P-51 that you get from the $20 pack. So this is a generic P-51. It's just called Speedy P-51. Uh, so yeah, this is what you will get from that $20 pack. And obviously you also get from the $60 one. Uh, yep. This is a fairly typical P-51D panel in front. Very, very common sort of look to it with the olive green panels on the sides. That's uh, P-51 for you. Okay, releasing the brakes. Let's see how it goes. Maffle pressure gets pretty high. Leftward tendency right there. And up. And I'll just bring the... Maffle pressure to three thousand uh, thirty for now. Uh, so we are at London. We're taking off from Heathrow, and we'll just fly by some London buildings just to give it a workout. Okay, let's push it to the limit and see. So what we're talking about is manifold pressure of sixty and RPM of three thousand right now. Cannot get to that three thousand three hundred line. There's a lot of pop in from the photogrammetry because uh, I've got the Orbix scenery for London as well. I wish they didn't fight against each other so much. But the photogrammetry is really having a hard time these days. So I'll have to get some more SSD space for the rolling cache or something. So yeah, like the other ones with vintage cockpits that max out at a manifold pressure of 60 or so. Uh, this one can sustain that for a while. So, basically, the ones that seem to conk out really fast are the ones, if you push the throttle all the way forward, the manifold pressure is more than 100. Uh, it makes sense, right? It's a little bit easier to deal with the quirks of the scenery from the inside, but still, there's some weird stuff going on, like, right there, that I don't need. Okay. Yeah, photogrammetry is being annoying. Okay, so this is spam can slash dolly. Um, I don't know why it has two names. It has dolly on one side, spam can on the other side. Name-wise, I like it. It's not a bad livery either in terms of colors. It's got lots of stuff going on. Plains of Fame Air Museum, Chino, California, and Valley, Arizona. Interior, uh, typical setup, much like the previous one, except without the olive panels, and so darker wood to the floor. So, okay. We are at Lima, Peru, by the way. Feels a little bit more frisky than the previous one. This is sort of this is maxing out my roll control here on the joystick. That's as fast as I can roll. Well, let's try to break it. 
Okay, let's go inverted. Doesn't seem to have particular problems with this. The engine didn't even make a sound. And then I am going to... Let me center my view for a sec. And then we are going pretty fast, so let's push down. It, yeah, it does not like that maneuver. Which is fair enough. That is not a maneuver planes are supposed to like. But this time I could recover it. Okay. Yeah. Scenery around Lima could do with some work though. Alright, so that is spam can slash dolly. And we are going to take a look at the last one finally. Okay, and so finally we are in the Striga. And it's got this nifty, uh, well still red, white, and blue livery. It's got this very streamlined racing cockpit. Italian, by the look of that flag. Interesting that it's got the blue stripe then. Why not green? Anyway, the cockpit is like this. So, it's got a dial that goes all the way up to 150. But it's got a very, you know, important red line at 60. Which probably should be, you know, paid attention to. Uh, but very clean uh, red and white interior experimental written on the side. Yep, so this is uh, maybe one of the nicer interior and exteriors for one of the racer ones. And we are here at Sydney. Test it out. The RPM goes right up to 35. Or 3,500 and actually right now the maximum manifold pressure is at 65 only so it's got a dial that goes up to 150 but I don't see that it needs it so green zone on a manifold pressure and RPM as we take a look around Sydney where's all the stuff so, okay. Well, the RPM is really low now. Oh, it's already died. Wow. Uh, I think the engine already died. Let's reload this one. I pushed it too hard too early, it seems. That one died really fast. That was much faster compared to the other ones. Okay, so I'll be more gentle with it this time. Um, okay, let's get that RPM set right away. 2700. I'll go, I'll just go 30 ish. How about that? Oh, sorry. I wasn't trying, uh, I was paying attention to the manifold pressure and the RPM and uh, <laughs> sort of left it get, let it get a little bit wiggly on the runway here. I think we can pull up here. Yep. It's not a whole lot of power going on. But if it doesn't die immediately, that will be an improvement. Well, fortunately, uh, in the green zone, it still seems to be able to get to a decent speed. All right. Again, if I had additional scenery here in Sydney, it sure needs it. But of course, we've got the Opera House there. Okay, I mean, it flies a decent speed. You know, it's maxing out the green range on the speedometer at these levels so 2700 rpm around 32 on the manifold pressure um, how long do we have if we push the manifold pressure to 45 ish which is still technically green on it which is where i had before but i did uh on the previous takeoff i started out uh full throttle which i did with the other planes as well mind you I don't immediately go full throttle. It's important with these powerful tail draggers to smoothly throttle up. Coolant temp is pretty high. There's a flip switch on the coolant thing, but I can't click it. It's inoperative. But the lights aren't turning on. 
On the other one, where, which had coolant temp lights, it did turn on at about these temperatures. Wow, uh, nearly 400 knots here as we descended a bit. So. Not bad. Still keeping it up. Still green zone area. Seems to be fine around here. Alright, let's see how long we last if we push it into that yellow zone on just the manifold pressure. So, around 60-ish here. Not crossing the red line or anything. And uh, we'll reduce the... Uh, we can't reduce the RPM much. Uh, it looks like once we throttle up to that, the RPM is at 2,900 no matter what. I can move it higher than 2,900, but not lower. Well, it seems to do racing-like things here. The coolant temp has gone up. I don't know what the max on that is. If I push the propeller all the way, we get to about 3,300 right now. Put it all the way down, it's still at 2,900-ish. If I push the manifold pressure all the way, we get to 68, which is different from the other planes. And so I'll just max everything out and see how long it lasts. It didn't seem like it lasted very long before. Maybe it just needs to get warmed up though, I don't know. Maybe at high velocities there's more air going through. And therefore it can cool off easier. We're guzzling fuel though. Still seems to be doing okay. So, uh, the key to keeping them intact might be to only go to max speed when you're ready, uh, max on the throttle when you're ready going very fast so that the air can help cool it. But that might vary based on which model we're flying. So, going max, uh, th I, there are plenty of planes that are like that where if you max out the throttle on takeoff, they'll actually bur burn up basically. So, yeah, it looks like this is one of those. But now, once we're at speed, it seems to be able to sustain this pretty well. Again, not as high on the manifold pressure as some of the other versions that we've seen. Uh, it seems to be keeping this up for a while. Uh, tops out at maybe about 415 when we're level. 415 knots indicated. Anyway, so I think I'll wrap it up here. I don't know how long this can go for, but it's, uh, we're running out of fuel. So uh, so with that brief review, well, it's not going to be very brief. The 10 planes takes a while, or 11. Uh, yes, with that review of the planes that are included with the P-51 bunch in the Reno Air Racing Pack, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.